Origin just wants to reaction and this is Meet the Gerald R. Ford class, US Navy's $13 billion aircraft carrier. The newer one apparently, okay. Yeah, so I've been watching this military type of videos recently in past few months. Yeah, yeah, it's been really interesting. So the more and more technology I see, it's like it's a it's a technological thing rather than so I've always been interested in tech. And it's really interesting to see things like this because it's always trickled down into like everyday use for people, somewhat technology here and there. So, and yeah, things like this might seem like, uh, okay, it's like small improvement here and there. But one thing I've noticed that when scale starts to get bigger, the needed technology for it also gets like even higher and higher. So this, look at the fucking scale of it. <laughs> it's like, okay, look at how many planes are there. Yeah, so this is... Okay, it's name of the 38th president. Yeah, Gerald R. Ford. Yeah, it makes sense. I heard of that. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting. It's super carriers. It's called super carriers. So there is like Iowa class for battleship, whatever that is, right? Uh, the Iowa class is supposed to be the biggest one. So Gerald R. Ford class is the biggest one in this carrier, super carriers apparently. Okay, let's watch it. I've been watching these videos a lot. So if you haven't seen those reactions, check out the link in the decision. There you'll find it or in the end of the video, end card, I guess. Uh, and yeah, I'm on Instagram now. If you want to follow me, also link in the decision. Let's watch it. Meet the new Gerald R. Ford class, U.S. Navy's $13 billion aircraft carrier. What the hell was that? The Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carrier, a technological marvel and symbol of American naval supremacy, ushers in a new era of maritime warfare capabilities. Named after the 38th President of the United States, these supercarriers represent a quantum leap in naval engineering and operational flexibility. Okay. With new technologies and advancements in various systems compared to legacy class carriers, the Gerald R. Ford carriers are ahead of their time, leaving history in the past and paving the way for their own future. But how the Ford class carriers differ significantly from their predecessors. First and foremost, the supercarriers are enormous. They're the largest ships in terms of displacement ever built for the U.S. Navy. Damn. Spanning a length of approximately 1,092 to 1,106 feet, weighing 100,000 tons with a price tag of around $13 billion, the Ford class incorporates more than 23 new technologies, comprising dramatic advances in the propulsion system, electromagnetic aircraft launch system, what? advanced arresting gear, machinery... Back up. <laughs> Look at this. I've seen those cables. This is so like, okay, cables are the last thing. Okay, let's make, let's improve that. And look at this shit. Electromagnetic aircraft oh. launch system, advanced arresting gear, machinery controls, radars, and integrated warfare systems. These innovations will support a 33% higher sortie generation rate at a significant cost savings when compared to Nimitz class carriers. Oh, Nimitz the Gerald class. R. Ford the class also right? offers a significant reduction approximately $4 billion per ship in life cycle operations and support costs compared to the earlier. I heard of Nimitz class and uh, yeah, Nimitz class was the biggest one. I guess they, this is the newer thing, Ford class. This didn't exist before this, I guess. The new technology and warfighting capabilities that the Gerald Ford brings to the fleet will transform naval warfare, supporting a more capable and lethal forward deployed U.S. naval presence. In an emerging era of great power competition, Ford class will serve as the most agile and lethal combat platform in the world, agile. with improved systems that enhance interoperability among other platforms in the carrier strike group, as well as with the naval forces of regional allies and partners. <laughs> Look at here, this is how small it looks compared to this. Another distinctive feature of the Gerald Ford is its 11 advanced weapons elevators, capable of lifting heavier loads up to 24,000 uh. pounds compared to those on other carriers. The movement of weapons from storage and assembly to the aircraft on the flight deck has been streamlined and accelerated. Ordnance will be lifted to the centralized rearming location via higher capacity heads, weapons elevators that use linear motors. The elevators are located so that ordnance need not cross any areas of aircraft movement, thereby reducing traffic problems in the hangars and on the flight deck. In 2008, Rear Admiral Dennis M. Dwyer said these changes would make it hypothetically possible to rearm the airplanes in minutes instead of hours. Furthermore, the USS Gerald Ford is equipped with two... I think military, you know, 
uh, gym weightlifting should be like standard, like some of the things you need to do or something. Because look at that, they have to like carry heavy shit all the time. B1B nuclear reactors. These reactors are smaller and simpler, requiring fewer crew members, yet they're significantly more powerful than the Nimitz-class A4W reactor. Two wow. reactors are installed on each Gerald R. Ford-class carrier, providing a power generation capacity at least 25% greater than that of the two A4W reactors in a Nimitz-class carrier. Mm. The Navy expects that the Gerald R. Ford-class will remain part of the fleet for 90 years, until the year 2105. Damn. This means that the class must effectively adopt new technology. Oh, love that. Is there any stealth technology or stealth building in these ships? Right? Like zigzag edges and things like that. Isn't stealth like really important nowadays? Like this is basically an airport. You're carrying along an airport, even an airport tower here, right? So if you want to do like, let's just say like some attack in some overseas country, this is the best thing to do it, right? You don't want to fly shit from US to all the way there. So you just bring this carrier close to where you want to go. That's why your carriers are insanely good. But at the same time, these are also like big targets, right? Targets where we're like, oh, that's a US car. Let's take out that first with ICBMs or whatever. I don't know. So is there any like jamming technology they use? Technology over the decades. Currently, only half of the electric power generation capacity is utilized by planned systems with the remaining half available for future technology. I mean, yeah, 90 years. A growing fleet. It's anticipated that there will be 10 ships in this Ford class. Thus far, five have been announced. USS Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78. First one. USS John F. Kennedy, CVN-79. USS Enterprise, CVN-80. USS Doris Miller, CVN-81. And CVN- USS Enterprise, isn't this Star, was Star Trek thing? What is that? 82. The USS Gerald R. Ford CVN-78 is the pioneering aircraft carrier of its class and represents the first new aircraft carrier design in over 40 years. Mm. The keel of the Ford was laid on November 14, 2009. Laying the keel is the formal recognition of the start of a ship's construction. Mm. On November 9, 2013, the Ford was christened by Susan Ford Bales, the daughter of Gerald R. Ford. I christen the United States ship Gerald R. Ford. May God bless the ship and all who sail her. USS Gerald R. Ford was commissioned on July 22, 2017 by President Donald Trump. The commissioning ceremony marks the entry of a ship into active naval service. This was the day Ford took her place in the fleet alongside the other ships. Gerald R. Ford entered the fleet, replacing the D. I like how it doesn't matter how technologically advanced we get, but right? some ocean sea thing, right? Like christening, that's important. Like breaking of the bottle and naming things. Because if you don't do it, that's a bad omen or something. So yeah, I guess it's tradition, but still. <laughs> Commission USS Enterprise, CVN-65, which ended her 51 years of active service. As of 2017, the USS Gerald R. Ford holds the distinction of being the world's largest aircraft carrier and the largest warship ever constructed. Mm. USS John F. Kennedy is the second aircraft carrier of the Ford class, and it's scheduled to replace USS Nimitz when it's decommissioned. Mm. USS Enterprise, the third Ford class aircraft carrier to be constructed for the Navy, it'll be the ninth United States naval vessel and the third aircraft carrier to bear the name. It's scheduled to be in operation by 2028 and will replace the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower. Carrier Air Wing The aircraft carrier with its embarked carrier air wing is a preeminent asset for the maintenance of maritime superiority across the oceans of the globe. Mm. History has time and again shown the invaluable benefits of having the capability yeah, to bring decisive yeah. air power to bear from the sea. The carrier air wing serves as the primary means of deploying both offensive and defensive firepower. The Ford has the capability to carry more than 75, 75. aircraft, which includes a diverse Damn. range of aircraft such as the F-35C Lightning II, FA-18EF Super Hornet, EA-18G Growler, E-2D Advanced Hawkeye, C-2A Greyhound, MH-60RS helicopters, and unmanned combat aerial vehicles. In 2020, the U.S. Navy no commenced the replacement name. of C-2As with CMV-22Bs, thereby fulfilling the carrier onboard delivery mission for the large deck carrier fleet. 
In addition to its versatility, the Ford class can recover and launch various short takeoff and vertical landing aircraft used by the U.S. Marine Corps. F-35. Furthermore, <laughs> the ship's design margins allow for the integration of future next-generation aircraft known as the FAXX fighter jet. The FAXX is part of a development and acquisition program for a future sixth generation air superiority fighter intended to replace the FA 18 EF Super Hornet and complement the F 35C starting in the 2030s. Ford defensive system. I was about to say that. Which system is that, right? Like there's like a tower type of system. As soon as something comes into range, it just detects it, right? I forgot the name of that, man. It's like automatic system, some plane co co come close by, it just like locks to it. It's like insane system, automatic, just shoots itself. I remember like seeing a video where it detects a friendly one, so it didn't attack it, it still was like tracking it. It's like, oh, that's scary. In addition to the carrier's air wing, the Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carrier is equipped with a formidable array of defensive weaponry. These include two RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, two RIM-116 Rolling Airframe Missile Systems, Three balanced close-in weapon systems, see whiz, that's for close-range defense, Seems, I think that's as well the one as I'm thinking four Mark 38 25 millimeter machine gun systems, and four M250 caliber machine guns. Men do, <laughs> the Ford men do need to do something. So, okay, that's all automatic. What about us? There you go. You get some few M. I uh, guess. There you go. This generous electrical capacity means that the ship could potentially host laser self-defense weapons, Powered by the ship's nuclear reactor, such a system would have a virtually limitless ammunition yeah, supply, nuclear significantly reactor. enhancing the ship's defensive capability. Wait, what the Who's fuck? All of the, this clip is real? They actually tested Why? this shit out? Significantly Look at that, enhancing the ship's <laughs> defensive the capability. Fuck? Look at that! <laughs> Ford Carrier Strike Group. A carrier strike group, abbreviated as CSG, is a type of carrier battle group that's a principal element of U.S. power, holding enough firepower to rival the air forces of entire nations. Its mission yeah. is to achieve and sustain <laughs> air, sea, and undersea control, response to crisis, and protect United States and- I, I like how the first, the biggest air force in the world is U.S., second biggest air force is Na U.S. Navy, apparently. Trust anywhere, anytime. Known for being powerful, mobile, flexible, independent, and sustainable, a carrier strike group typically contains roughly 7,500 personnel and a variety of ship types, including a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, at least one cruiser, and a destroyer squadron with at least two destroyers or frigates. A carrier strike group also on a... Okay, I know this might be stupid, but I'm not, they're not going to some kind of barriers here long enough so planes somehow don't fall down for whatever reason or some men or some guy just walking don't fall down. Right? Just keep clear the runway. Why do you need all this like open? I don't know. It just panics me. Oh, what the fuck? What if a small tsunami suddenly comes and I guess a plane falls? I don't know. Maybe it's like anchored good enough that it won't fall. Who knows? Occasion includes submarines, attached logistic ships, and a supply ship. The Carrier Strike Group Commander operationally reports to the commander of the numbered fleet, who is operationally responsible for the area of waters in which the Carrier Strike Group is operating. Ford-class Carrier Strike Groups have the capability to strike targets from a thousand miles away and can extend their reach even farther with aerial refueling. As noted by Brian Clark, a former U.S. Navy officer and defense expert at the Hudson Institute, these groups possess the ability to defend against air, missile, and submarine threats, and can maintain maritime security over an area spanning hundreds of square miles. Mm. Aircraft carriers have long been used to project strength and deter hostile forces. Yeah, that was insanity. <laughs> Look at the video, mid the Nimit class, US Navy 8.5 billion. They're like, I'm, I can do one new better, man. Well, 50% more money, but it's like even bigger. But 13 billion doesn't surprise me. When I know like something like B2s and things, how much they cost, like 2 billion just for a fucking plane. So for a 13 billion, there's kind of like walking fortress, basically. Look at the size of it. This is insanity. Just like, yeah, <clears throat> this is Nimitz class, right? It's bigger than this one. Ford class apparently, Gerald R. Ford class. Obviously the first one is always named after the class itself. So first ship is Gerald R. Ford and then like JFK and USS Enterprise. Which I'm pretty sure isn't like a, some Star Trek thing or something, I don't know. 
I'm pretty sure I remember something like that. I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> Man, I love this. I love the size of it. But still, I'm still, you know, there's like still question. Like, isn't this like a, you know, the stealth is needed there? What is some like, I'm guessing the only thing would be like, it has like those laser thing. Um, it, or maybe they will fit it there. Right? They can detect the oncoming missile and blow it up, I guess. Anti-ICBM technology. It has to have that. Because it is a sitting duck otherwise. Right? There's some like, oh, look at that. <clears throat> that four class carrier is coming. Let's just attack it with the, like missiles. And if you're lasers, one thing I've noticed that if you're like, let's just say like uh, <clears throat> Israel's Iron Dome, right? It works at certain level. But like what happened recently, if you launch too many missiles, it's not going to work. That's what happens when you like, uh, you know, attack ballistic with ballistic, right? But if you have lasers, like laser can pick out way too many missiles. So laser defense, uh, you know, weapon is really good in that way. So I guess they're going to fit that in future. This is a 90-year thing, so yeah. All right, well, uh, there was a mid general R4 class, US Navy's $13 billion aircraft carrier by channel US Military News. If you like my next phone, subscribe. If you haven't seen videos like this from Fight Return or something like that, reactions of this, check the end card right now or link in the description. And yeah, I'll see you next time.